Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to day three of albums that are 40 years old in 2023. That's right, we're looking back on 1983. We've picked out our 21 favorites, or at least I hope you have up to this point. We've picked out our 28 favorites that were released in 1983. <clears throat> Another tough assignment because there were a lot of really good albums that came out in 83. As we will see as we venture on through the month today, day number three, we're going to take a look at a album that came out in December 1983. It was the third album from this band, artist, produced at Ridge Farm Studios in Rusper, England, for Epic Records and CBS Associated, produced by Max Norman and the band Bark at the Moon by Ozzy Osbourne and company. You know, I wish, I don't know, I never knew why with these uh, early remasters uh, for the Ozzy catalog, they would do the cover image, like this little small thing in the middle with the big Ozzy and the black ad. It's just, I want to see the full thing on there, man. It's kind of a cool cover. Anyway, this, uh, like I said, is Ozzy's third studio album. This is the first studio album to come out after the death of Randy Rhodes. Here we have the lineup of Ozzy on vocals. Uh, Jakey Lee comes into the band. On guitars, Jakey Lee was uh, briefly a member of Rat. Uh, he now comes into the band. We got Bob Daisley on bass and backing vocals. Of course, Bob also helped out with the songwriting on this album. Tommy Aldridge on drums and Don Airy on keyboards. Of course, Don Airy played with Rainbow, been a member of Deep Purple for many years, played with Gary Moore, and the Don Airy's done a million things. Tommy Aldridge, amazingly enough, this is the only studio album that he would appear on in the Ozzy discography, considering kind of the length of time served uh, on and off in Ozzy's band. Interesting how this is the only album where he appeared on studio album. So here you got some good songs on here. This is a little bit different. I, I think uh, the music of uh, Ozzy and the band with the passing of Randy takes on a little bit of a different edge, I think. It's a uh, little more, again, this is 1983. We're moving into the slowly into the middle part of the decade. This is a little more commercial sounding than what you got on Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman. Less kind of like that gothic heavy metal, more of just kind of like hard rock, catchy, hard rock, catchy, heavy metal, whatever you want to call it. You got the title track, Bark at the Moon. Easily my favorite song on here, and I think one of the highlights of the Jakey Lee era and a highlight of Ozzy's solo career. Bark at the Moon got a great riff at the beginning, nice vocal from Ozzy. Really cool solo from Jakey Lee, who proved to be a pretty good guitar player uh, and a good fit for Ozzy's band. I personally, I think I prefer Jake in like the Badlands situation. I think he seems a little bit more at home in like bluesier heavy rock than he does in this style of music, but I think he he does a fine job on the two albums that he appeared on. Uh, you Are No Different, there's a lot of Ozzy's like Beatles influence on this album, if you noticed, uh, especially on some of the choruses. You don't really hear that much on Diary of Mad Men and Blizzard of Oz. You, you're starting to hear it a lot on this album, and I think a lot of the albums going forward, you get more of those kind of poppy songs on the albums. You're No Difference, one of them. You got to Now You See It, Now You Don't. It's pretty much good, good, fast-paced, heavy rocker. Rock and Roll Rebel is one of the heaviest songs on the album. Another one of my favorites on this album. Great guitar work from Jake and a really good drum performance from Tommy Aldridge. Then you got Center of Eternity. Good crunchy rocker on there. So Tired, another one of those kind of soaring ballad, pop ballads, Beatles influence. Hear a little bit of the move too. I'm not sure if Ozzy was also into is also into the move as well, but I hear a little bit of that. Uh, you got Slow Down or ELO, right? The move, ELO, the Jeff Lynne thing. Uh, Slow Down, pretty good song there. And then you got Waiting for Darkness, which is another fast paced rocker to finish off the album. It's kind of a brief album, 30 some odd minutes, just under 40 minutes, but I think it's. Uh, Pretty strong. Yeah, I, I find that um, most of the Ozzy discography, which I was heavily into back in the day, I found that like all of the post Diary of a Madman albums, I, I don't think I love as much as I used to back in the day. I still like them, most of them a lot. Especially the two with Jake are always going to be very special to me. I saw them live many times on those, uh, those two tours, two lengthy tours with Jake. But um, I don't like I if you if we would have gone back thirty years I probably would have said easily that this was my number three favorite Ozzy solo album and it might still be but to me there is there has been 
over the years with time, I think the gulf that separates the two Randy albums and everything else has gotten wider. I think that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here is that I think back in the day, you know, this was new, it was fresh. Yes, Ozzy's still with us. He's still playing. He put the band back together. We miss Randy so much, but Jakey's fine and and all that. And I, you know, we all worshipped, most of us Ozzy fans worshipped the Bark at the Moon. And I think looking back, I still really like this album a lot, but I, I, I think this and most of the rest of the Ozzy solo catalog, I don't think any of it ever even came close to measuring up with those first two records. Still a fine album. Still a fine album. <clears throat> and one of my favorites of the post-Randy era, <clears throat> excuse me, early in the morning. Uh, but uh, is it a drop-dead classic? Mm, maybe not. Is it a really solid Ozzy album? Yes, indeed. Very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. So I had to make my list here, uh, but I, I think over time, I'm belaboring this point, I guess. Over time, it to me, it hasn't aged as well as the first two records. Again, that's not kind of not what this series is all about, but we're talking about the album, so I figured I'd just kind of throw that out there. But I do like it quite a bit. That's why I made the list. So anyway, day number three, Ozzy Osbourne, Bark at the Moon, the first album with Jakey Lee on guitar. Some fine, fine material on this album. So let us know what you think of Bark at the Moon down in the comments below, as well as your pick for day three here as we count our way all the way up to the 28th of February, looking back on 1983. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together. All the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, if you'd care to make a channel donation or check out our merch page, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page and the merch page down in the comments below. Not in the comments. In the video description below. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for day four as we uh, take a look at albums that are 40 years old in 2023. Celebrate 1983. Till then, I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. Friday morning at the Funhouse with Martin Popoff coming up uh, just a little bit. So, uh, till then, take care. Bye bye.